Welcome to MSP Voice, the weekly show for MSPs by MSPs. Brought to you by CloudBerry, the number one cross-platform cloud backup. Learn more at cloudberrylab.com. This is MSP Voice. Hello and welcome to MSP Voice. This is episode number 37. Uh, today's guest is John Gamble with Go Concepts out of Southwest Ohio near the Cincinnati area. Uh, fun interview. Um, he actually talks about how they've specialized in serving county boards for the developmentally disabled uh, in Ohio. And, um, you know, the, the process it took for him to get there is a, it's a great story. Um, but then also the work that they do with these organizations, I think is totally great. So that's the interview. Um, again, mspvoice.com is your source for all things MSP Voice. Um, I've got the webinar from last week I need to get posted up there um, as well as we just did one this week as well so more stuff on webinars coming um, so definitely check that out um, and uh, take a listen to the episode so with that let's go ahead and get into our best of reddit um, the first one that, that, that popped up for me I think you know is is relevant um, it's it's MSP RMM security now this person goes into a long story about how he contacted his RMM vendor to ask about security. Now, obviously this was prompted um, even before, I think from in terms of the timeline, uh, before the issues with the ConnectWise Kaseya integration that was exposed a few weeks ago. Um, but he just went through and, and, and talked to his RMM, asked his RMM vendor who he, who he does not identify um, about security and found that you know, there's all sorts of issues um, in terms of you know, enabling two-factor authentication, can break things, um, called support and realized that, hey, they have actually a back door um, to be able to get in and is a higher level of access than what he has. Um, and, and obviously all of these things concerned him. So you know, he made this post really as kind of a public service announcement to say, hey, contact your RMM vendor, contact your, you know, any vendor that, that has access to all these computers and ask them about the security, make sure that things are locked down because as we all know, MSPs are a rich target because as an MSP, you service a lot of customers. If someone can find a back door and get in and infect all of your customers and ransom and all those types of things, I know it has us all a little bit on edge right now. So um, definitely something to check out. Um, there's others that talk about, you know, different vendors, they go into different stories and those types of things. Um, you know, I'm not going to obviously read all the comments, but definitely something, you know, you might want to keep an eye on um, in terms of what people are saying about this. And again, I, you know, I, you know, his, his last post, his, his, his main point is, you know, <laughs> too long didn't read is nobody has your back question everything. Um, so anyway, you know, I, I just think it's a good kind of public service to put out there um, to let you know to, to definitely check with your vendors uh, to make sure that, that you are protected. Um, next up is an interesting post. Um, do you guys do social media for your MSP? Um, you know, it's, it's an interesting question. Uh, one of the webinars I just did with IT Rockstars talks about some social media that you can do, whether it's LinkedIn or Facebook and those types of things. Um, so this is kind of an interesting topic, I think, in terms of, you know, do you use social media? Um, what kind of content do you post? Um, now understand that there are companies out there that will provide you with content. Um, and then you can then go and, and post it, um, you know, yourselves. Of course, they charge for these things, but, you know, you don't necessarily have to worry about writing up all this content yourself. Um, so, and, and I think, you know, probably the best response here, um, was you know someone talking about his system? So he 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 subscribes to Technical.com's white label newsletters for content. He provides a link for that. Um, he has a word based um, WordPress based MSP website. Published one of those articles via scheduled post once a week, and then he uses a social media platform called Hootsuite, um, which I actually used to. As Hootsuite's great, um, and with Hootsuite he schedules all of these different things to go out at different points and. Um, he says he goes in and sets it all up once a month to schedule the post. He also does holidays and, and different types of things like that. But he schedules these things to post to Facebook, to post to Instagram, to post to Twitter. Um, and, you know, once he's got it all set up, it then kind of runs automatically. And then he goes at the end of the month and then sets it up for the next month. Um, I thought it was an interesting, you know, way to do it um, because, you know, not everyone realizes there's all these tools out there that you can use, especially scheduling. Um, you know, that, that make life easier um, if you have the content. So um, he even tells you where to get the content. So it's, it's kind of a, you know, just a good way um, to, to think about it. 
Um, you know, you don't have to pay tons of money uh, with social media, but you know, if you if you can write your own content, then great. Um, if you've got somebody that's going to do it for you, you know, that's great as well. Um, but you know, I think one of the things you want to understand with social media is talk less about your company and provide more useful information that people are going to find interesting that will lead them back to your company. Um, that's my social media tip of the day. <laughs> Um, next up is something that happened yesterday. Um, today's Wednesday. This happened, or I'm sorry, today's Tuesday. This happened Monday. Um, ConnectWise is being acquired by Tama Bravo. Um, you know, it's, it was all over the news, all over the MSP boards and groups and everything. Um, do I know what this means for ConnectWise? No. Um, I do know that there are a lot of people at ConnectWise that are cashing in, um, so, so that's good. Um, if they decide to stay or, or go with their newfound wealth, is uh, will, will only be told over, over time. Um, but there's a lot of comments on this um, on on Reddit in terms of you know what's going to happen now is ConnectWise you know are they going to fail? Are they going to break? You know what's Tama Bravo going to do? Because they also own you know a bunch of other MSP related even SolarWinds and, and Barracuda and some other stuff. Um, so, you know, this consolidation with private equity has been going on in the MSP space for, for a number of years. Uh, so it's not necessarily surprising. Uh, you know, I know ConnectWise is one of the last holdouts and being a you know, completely private company. Uh, but, you know, at the end of the day, I think some of this consolidation is going to be good. Um, and some of it will be bad. And some of it, you know, we're, we're going it, to, it's, it's going to make changes. And, you know, we all hate change. But guess what? Change is what makes the world go around. So, you know, keep an eye on this space, keep an eye on ConnectWise. Um, you know, who knows if IT Nation and those events are, are gonna be, keep going. I think, I'm, I'm sure they probably will because I, I know they're, they're, they're great vehicles for ConnectWise. Um, and because it's private equity, I don't see the name changing or anything like that. Uh, so they're probably gonna operate just like this for a couple of years. And who knows, maybe at some point, Tama Bravo will take them public as a separate entity. Um, that's always a possibility as well. So um, in general, I don't think it's terrible news. Um, you know, anytime you get a cash infusion like that, I think it's good. And private equity, um, besides, you know, having some, some seats on the board and those types of things, generally, you know, they let the business run the way it has been. Um, but, you know, now there's some, some newfound cash and infusions. So uh, we'll, we'll see what happens there. But it's definitely exciting news this week um, that, that hit yesterday. And finally, um, kind of a technical question, <laughs> maybe, uh, but how long for a computer install? How long does it take you? Uh, to install a computer. So, you know, so this is, he's looking for some insights from other MSPs regards to how long the average computer install takes their text to complete. Now, the reason he's asking is because, you know, back when he was a tech, it used to take two to three hours. But now he's a manager and he, I have to review my text time and see some of them taking four to five hours every time they do a computer, um, which has prompted this question. So, the question is, does it really only take two to three hours still, or are his text fudging their numbers and saying it takes four to five? Um, now, most responses say, you know, the first one here is to estimate two to three on average. Um, you know, some, some take one hour, some take four or five. So it's, it's not, you know, everyone takes two hours or whatever. There are some averages in there. Um, and, you know, one person points out that data transfer can be a big deciding factor if you're doing like an, an upgrade, so a new PC, but you got to get all the data from the old PC or, or pull down those types of things. Um, and then someone else says, you know, it depends on apps, right? If it's a basic, basic office, you know, Microsoft Office install, no issue. But if they have 15 custom applications with crazy settings, um, then you're going to be there a while. So, you know, mileage may vary, but um, it sounds like, you know, this two to three hours isn't necessarily a bad estimate, but some will take longer. Whether or not his texts are, you know, being truthful and when, it's, when they say it takes four to five hours every time, I don't know. Um, but anyway, if you have any insights into this or you want to provide some insight, uh, definitely comment on this post. So that's all I have for Reddit this week. Um, let's go ahead and jump into the interview. Again, this is John Gamble with Go Concepts, and they serve the developmentally disabled board, county boards in the state of Ohio. Great interview. Thank you. Hello and welcome. Today I am joined by John Gamble with Go Concepts out of the Southwest Ohio area. John, why don't you tell us a bit about yourself and your business? Hey, uh, thank you first of all, very much for, for having me on and giving me an opportunity to talk about the great things we're doing here at, uh, at Go Concepts. Um, Go Concepts is a managed service provider. We've been in business since 1997. We've wow. done 
a, a lot of work in uh, both the public and private sector. Mm -hmm. um, a quick background, back in uh, the early days, late 90s, our municipality overbuilt uh, Time Warner's uh, uh, cable implementation here. And uh, out of all of the respondents to that, we were selected. It was the first public-private partnership in the country. And we handled the entire data side of that network uh, for oh, them. Wow. Designing the connectivity for the school, the fiber connectivity for the schools, uh, doing everything from help desk to all the back end on the data side, and then also designing and implementing a uh, voice over IP phone system for that. Great. And uh, great. Uh, it was early days of Doxis. If anybody has cable internet now uh, with Spectrum, uh, I call them Time Warner because uh, we've been doing this a long time, but uh, yep. Spectrum, any of those guys, it's basically that. And um, so we started out doing a lot of that back then. And uh, when we started doing that, some of the first DOCSIS equipment ever made by Cisco rolling off the line came to our office here in Lebanon, Ohio, just north of Cincinnati. And I actually cool. have a, uh, a cable modem from Sony, hand-labeled number three in our possession. Wow. <laughs> so, yeah, we used to have some of the big guys, uh, 3Com, USR, those companies that were around back then doing it would actually send out some uh, field engineers to do testing here because the only guys doing it were um, Excited Home, Time Warner, and us, you know, this little mm -hmm. company in Ohio. So we grew up on doing that and uh, providing help desk services and uh, troubleshooting um, all the way going back to 1997. And uh, since then, worked with a, a lot of varying size company from very small to very large and uh, a lot in the professional services area, banking, law offices, mm -hmm. healthcare, what have you. And uh, then starting in 2013, um, we started focusing on the, uh, the local government uh, development of disabil disabilities community, so I'll get it out, uh, <laughs> here, in, uh, here in Ohio. Okay. And uh, it's incredibly rewarding incredibly passionate uh, for personal reasons as well as professional of working in that community. And basically we are an MSP that provides services to uh, county boards of DD and any providers and agencies that are uh, related to the DD community uh, here in Ohio. Now we're not providing services directly to the individuals that they serve us, but what we mm -hmm. are doing is helping those helping others and make it making it easier for them to do their job, making it easier for them to provide those vital services to those individuals. So it's, it's a great space to be in. We absolutely love what we have the opportunity to do. And uh, that doesn't mean we're not still doing uh, what we did before. We're still providing great service to uh, those customers that we've been, you know, really fortunate and blessed to ha have uh, obtained along the way. Mm -hmm. um, but since 2013, this has really been our focus. It gave birth to uh, IT4DD.com and uh, some great content and things that we're doing uh, in, that, in that space. Okay, yeah, because you know, one of my questions is, you know, do you, do you specialize in a vertical? And, you know, it sounds like, <laughs> we're, well, I mean, you know, if you can find a niche and it works for you, then, then great. And then the fact that, you know, what you're doing is, is helping others um, you know, I, th I think is, is even is even better. So, you know, being able to provide the services for the, the development that's developmentally disabled communities or organizations and, and agencies, um, you know, I, th I think is great. Oh, absolutely. And um, again, it wasn't a situation where we were looking for a uh, industry or vertical to get into, uh, like a lot of companies. Uh, are mm -hmm. doing and, and, and specializing in a single verdict for MSPs is um, is a great idea and that's a whole other discussion that you know, <laughs> we, we might be getting off on that uh, on that tangent today but it, for us um, we didn't approach it as hey we've got to find a, 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 a vertical that we can you know that we can exploit or that we can take advantage of it's yeah. really an area that we are passionate about okay. uh, in working with the developmental disabilities community and i think they can um, they can see that uh, the people that we are blessed to work with there they can see how much our staff really cares about what they're doing um, besides the fact that they love you know doing it work yeah uh, it is a um, it's a labor of love for, for the staff that we have here. Yeah. And it's, it's, you know, it's, it's more, it's a bit more rewarding too, right? Because just oh, instead of, instead of helping some, another company increase their profits with their, you know, through their IT, you're actually helping an agency 
you know, increase their services to the people that they serve. So, you know, it, it, it's more rewarding, I guess, in, in that way. Oh, absolutely spot on. We're, we're trying to help them um, do the most with the resources that they have available to them mm -hmm. and, and be able to do their job in the best way possible. And we do that through, you know, our experience and expertise and trying to help them apply best practices. But at the same time, uh, we're listening to them. You know, it's that yeah. whole uh, they ask you answer approach of, you know, what do you need? What are the things that are going to help you? What are the questions you have? What are the ideas you yeah. have? They bring those to us and, and we try to address all of those um, to the best of our ability. Okay. Now, you, you said you said earlier, all of Ohio. So, you know, I mean, I, I used to live there. So yeah. <laughs> I know it's, it's, it's a, it's a pretty big state. Yes, <laughs> Ohio State. Um, so how do you, um, I mean, you know, does that cover from, you know, Cincinnati where you're near all the way up to Cleveland? Um, or, you know, or do you specialize more in, in, the, in Southern Ohio or, or just anywhere? Absolutely, anywhere in Ohio. Um, and, and to give you an idea, you know, in our, oh, in, in our prior life, let's say, <laughs> uh, you know, in, in the uh, numerous customers that uh, we've handled, we've had multiple customers outside of the Ohio area. We actually do still service uh, some of those, you know, in that, okay. in that cable world, we have some customers outside of that Ohio area. We do some work with, uh, with some other um, companies that do uh, uh, projects in the county government or local government space, okay. we, you know, we bring in and, and provide the IT expertise mm -hmm. for them. We have some, you know, really high level senior IT consultants here. And uh, so we do support other outside the area, but our focus in the DD community is here in Ohio and that is all of Ohio. And we're able to do that because, you know, in the MSP space, w w when it comes to that, we're not a lot different than, than any other MSP provider as far yeah. as, you know, we all have services, we all have tools, we all have the remote part of the business and yep. that uh, proactive part where we're doing, you know, 90 for some percent of what we do uh, remotely. You know, the, the difference is what we're bringing to the table or is, you know, that secret sauce, if you will, of um, what we're providing in that particular vertical and how we feel that we're doing it better than anybody else. I mean, our statement is the premier provider in that space and we truly believe we are and our customers tell us they feel that way as well. Um, so for those times where we have to dispatch or we have to be on site, uh, you know, we have our SLAs for that. And we also have relationships through our uh, peer group uh, that uh, we are fortunate to be a part of with some very experienced uh, technicians here in Ohio that if we need that emergency dispatch, that we can mm -hmm. put them on site uh, immediately. Um, few and far between as many yeah. MSP knows if you're doing a good job <laughs> and you have the tools in place and um, you are very proactive and not mm -hmm. reactive you know it's it, it's not the old days of putting out fires we're preventing fires so <laughs> yeah that's well that, that's that's the whole idea of going to you know the, the managed service part right is mm -hmm. you know instead of break fix you're you're you know you're 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 being proactive and making sure that you, things don't break that you have to fix. Absolutely, absolutely. So, um, so, you know, it sounded like, you know, early on you got started, you know, through Time Warner and, and, and doing those build outs. So did you ever really do break fix or was that not a concept or? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, hey, you know, it's funny, you know, going back to 1997, our, our company really started on, you know, this was done on the placemat of a small dive restaurant that uh, we used to eat at all the time. I think I once had eight meals in a row there. I mean, <laughs> local spot and uh, a, a incredibly talented uh, young man that um, uh, I was uh, working with. I was actually mm -hmm. advisor of Future Business Leaders of America at our local high school for my oh, okay. future retired. We had a great relationship. He had me come in from the business community and uh, had me take that over, had the relationship with this young man, incredibly mm -hmm. talented. And he was actually doing work uh, with our county as a network engineer when started out when he was 14 years old. So wow. yeah, just incredibly talented. And he, um, uh, you know, once he uh, uh, was a little bit older and he came to me and said, hey, listen, I've got this idea of what we want to do. Actually, it started another small company with a large group of guys. And we know how you know, that doesn't work when you have a large group of guys yeah. trying to own something and said, hey, I've got this idea. 
back of a placemat over dinner and uh, business plan and Go Concepts was started. So Go Concepts comes from G is Gamble, that's me. O is Oliver, that's him. It's Go Concepts. Uh, Dan. Oh, great. And um, so, yeah, so we started out early in the day. We were an ISP and a website design and hosting firm like a lot of people were back in 1997. So we mm -hmm. were doing, um, uh, you know, help desk and consulting and getting people on 56K, you know, 56K flex <laughs> back in the day doing ISDN. We did DSL. We've done all that. And then when the opportunity came and our, our city put this out and, and we were fortunate enough to be chosen, um, you know, we put that expertise into that doxis and, and, and cable world. And uh, so a natural extension for those customers that we were assisting, you know, over the phone mm -hmm. was to be able to provide um, break fix assistance for them. So, uh, okay. so we did that, that's grown and uh, we don't do as much. Uh, mm -hmm. In fact, I was just looking at that today. Our break fix percentage of our business as far as just walk in is very small but it's by design because we're doing so much of it. That time is dedicated yeah. to uh, rollouts for our MSP customers, whether it's laptops, desktops, um, you know, repairing their existing technology, whatever it may be. But we do still provide those repair services for those okay. customers that we service in this market. Great. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I know you mentioned earlier something about, you know, should you, should you verticalize if you're an MSP? Mm -hmm. um, and it sounds like you might have some opinions on that. So it's, it's, <laughs> it, it appears it's been good for you um, in terms of, you know, looking at, you know, obviously, you know, you didn't necessarily set out to do it, but it just kind of, it happened that way and you, and you found some passion and, and, you know, that's great. But, you know, what are your thoughts on, on MSPs that focus on verticals specifically? Like maybe pick one vertical and, and just focus on that. I'll give you two, uh, two things on that. One goes back to where we were well before 2013 and some things is we were kind of working towards a vertical and we weren't mm -hmm. intentionally working towards a vertical, if that makes sense. We were, <laughs> we were everything to everybody. Yeah. And a lot of companies outside the IT industry, I'm sure try to be, but definitely inside the IT industry because we get in this mentality of, we don't want the customer to talk to anybody else, right? We don't want anybody <laughs> to touch them. We, if they need something, we want to be the ones to provide it. And mm -hmm. you can't say no. And when you can't say no, you start doing a lot of one-off projects and you start committing a lot of staff time to learning things and uh, investigating things and coming up for solutions that you may never use again, because maybe yeah. it's something specific to that customer, or, or maybe there's just not a, a huge market for it where it makes sense to uh, try and take it to a, to a larger audience. So we fell into that trap. I mean, that's, uh, you know, I'll admit that when, when I make mistakes and, and uh, we fell into that. We were trying to be everything to our customers. And uh, so we had a sit down, we decided, hey, we're going to focus on what we do best. And uh, that was providing, you know, great uh, support services, great consulting services, uh, our um, corporate grade hosted uh, exchange. Uh, we have our own in-house, you know, in a world okay. that people are going to, uh, to Office 365. We have an implementation here and we have our own data center. So it kind of makes us a little mm -hmm. bit more unique. We have, a, yeah. we have our own data center here, diversely routed, uh, you know, tons of bandwidth coming in. And uh, it's been built since day one of our facility here in 97. So, mm -hmm. um, so we wanted to focus on what we did well. We're not going to do anything else and yeah. stuck to that mentality. And um, we made the decision that uh, if we were going to grow, uh, that we were going to have to bring in somebody to assist us. So we were sitting down talking with a consultant and they said one of the things that really kicked me in the gut and it stuck with me ever since. He said, John, you know what? You are succeeding in anonymity. <laughs> and yeah. so, you know, think about that. You, you know, hey, you think, hey, we're doing great. We're making money and, you know, we got customers that like us and everything else. But Nobody knew about it. Nobody else knew about it. We were really sure. We were terrible at marketing and we were terrible at sales. And, and, and the bad thing is I come from that background. Okay. I used to manage an office for the largest real estate company in the world. We were the largest in Cincinnati, got bought out. All of a sudden we're the largest in the world. I manage an office. I'm helping other agents, you know, mm -hmm. grow their careers and make money and doing a lot of that. But it was different in the IT world. You know, it was just, it was just different. And we were really struggling there. And I was more focused on the business side of things than on that and uh, word of mouth and those things were doing well. So um, that really kicked me in the gut. So we made the decision, we had to bring in a partner and we were 
we were spending all this time telling customers to outsource their IT to us and let us do it, right? Mm -hmm. that's, uh, that's what companies like us are doing. You know, focus <laughs> on what you do well. And we weren't taking our own advice. So we decided we're going to focus on what we do really well and that's helping customers and solving problems and coming up with the great IT solutions for them. And mm -hmm. everything else, we're going to work with great partners that are great in the field to do that. Okay. We made the decision to bring on an MSP partner. Um, we brought on, uh, we, and we interviewed the top companies in that area. Mm -hmm. Made a decision to go with one. We didn't go with any of the others because they were bad. We went with one because they reminded of, of ourselves. Yeah, cultural. And everything they were doing. We started yeah. working with uh, Stuart Crawford and, uh, his, and Missy Crawford and their team at Ulistic uh, down in Florida, I think near where you are. Yep, not too far. <laughs> yeah, and we've been working with them since May, June of last year. And uh, it's been fantastic. We really enjoy um, working with them. But long answer to your question, <laughs> sitting down with Stuart. And Stuart looked at everything that we were doing. And he said, listen, you really need to focus on this vertical. He mm -hmm. said, that's, I can tell you get a lot of joy out of it. You're very passionate about it. Your customers seem to love you. And the things that you have in place seem to be really geared towards that. And I was incredibly reluctant at first. You know, I'm not going to lie. I was, I was worried. I was worried about, you know, putting your eggs in one basket. I was worried about, um, you know, a lot of times people are looking at a vertical that's pretty large. Yeah. You know, law firms, healthcare, <laughs> whatever it may be. We're in the developmental disability space. There's only 88 counties in Ohio. That's 88 mm -hmm. county boards. Now there are many, many support organizations, but a lot of those are very small and very small budgets. So we are in a very narrow vertical. So if you're hesitant for a vertical, you can imagine how hesitant I was <laughs> for a very narrow vertical. But we sit down and we talked it through and the advantages were just too many. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, standardization, um, the onboarding, the being able to easily train our staff to this is what we do and this is how you help these customers. Mm -hmm. And if we bring on a new staff member to be able to easily uh, replicate that, um, it, you know, when you started putting the reasons on the board, they far outweighed the negatives. And uh, so, you know, after a couple of days of, you know, heavy discussions with that between our uh, ownership group and with Stuart, it, uh, it just became an obvious decision, especially when you weigh that fact of how much we enjoy doing it and how rewarding it is to our entire team um, to be able to work in that space. I mean, hey, my wife is a school administrator. She's done a tremendous amount of work with um, <laughs> development disabled uh, students at her school with uh, Project Search and helping place students and job opportunities and working with students of varying capabilities. So it's something that's, um, uh, you know, besides having family members uh, in that community, it's something that we're just personally passionate about. And uh, so it really made it an easy decision. And I'll tell you what, I, if we had to go back and do it a hundred times, I, I, I'd do it every time over. Okay. Yeah. You know, it's, but you know, when you talk about verticals though, <clears throat> you know, you talk about the fact that, you know, Ohio, Ohio only has 88 counties, mm -hmm. right. But, and then there's other smaller companies, but if you just focused on the dental vertical, mm -hmm. right. How many dentist offices within a geographic range would you be able to focus on? Would it be more than 88? Um, you know, That's a great point. <laughs> So, you know, it, it, you, you, but, you know, when you say, okay, it's only, only this vertical, but when you expand out to, you know, the entire state, then that makes more sense. Whereas if you were in a different vertical, you might be locked into your geographic area because other people are already in that vertical in other places. So, um, you know, I, that, when you said that, I was kind of, kind of thinking, it's like, yeah, it's only mm -hmm. 88 counties, but, it, it, you know, it's the whole state. So. Absolutely. <laughs> and again, you know, that, that standardization, that ability to say that you are a professional in that area or the professional for us, yeah. I don't know anybody else that is focused on the development of disabilities community. Mm -hmm. So it's easy for us to say, you know, we are the premier provider. We are yeah. You know, we believe and feel we are the best, but I'll tell you what, we know that we are the best choice for any DD related organization in Ohio because we have experience with the software uh, uh, solutions that they use, the mm -hmm. vendors that they use, how they operate. Uh, we understand that and we can come in and that's the really cool thing, you know, um, 
Uh, when you're dealing with these uh, local governments, a lot of times they have their own uh, internal IT. Maybe it's somebody that's been there for a long time. Uh, so we can come in and fit wherever they want. So we can come yeah. in and full managed IT, you know, outsource, mm -hmm. give it to us, soup to nuts, you know, A to Z, we're your IT uh, company. So that works in a situation where maybe they're working with, maybe uh, some of the counties have a data board that kind of handles, you know, IT for everybody in the county. <laughs> Uh, it's not specific to them, or maybe they have somebody that's retiring, or maybe they have a single local person that's doing IT for them that just can't handle them at the size right, or that's retiring. They can bring us in a situation we can hit the ground running because you know, hey, we're the we're the experts in in the DD space. So, you know, mm -hmm. we don't have to learn their business, uh, their organization or operations. We can come in and, and we're ready to go. Now, of course, each of them do things a little bit differently, but at, at the base we understand what they need and we can come right in and we can say, hey, here's what this county's doing. Here's what this county's doing. Here's what this support organization is doing that'll mm -hmm. work for you. Um, so we're able to come to, or the other cool thing is, so they do have an IT staff, maybe a single person, maybe a couple of people. We can come in in a co-managed IT yeah. situation and we can be their IT team, right? So mm -hmm. if you have one person, that person takes vacations, they get sick. Um, they a lot of times are overwhelmed dealing with the issue of the day, you know, and, and important things get moved to the back burner. You know, it's again, it's going back to that putting out fires instead of preventing them yeah. it's because there's only so many man hours and one person can only ever know so much. We're able to come in and apply an, either, an entire team with a breadth of knowledge that it far exceeds what one person could know. I don't have one person on my team that knows <laughs> everything. Yeah. So, uh, and we're available, you know, seven days a week, 24 hours a day, 365. We mm -hmm. have systems in place and yeah. we're able to make them the absolute best they can be at their job. And what we actually have found is when we come into those situations where somebody's reluctant or they see us as a threat, like, oh, you're just trying to get rid of me, or, you know, hey, you know, I'm going to lose my job. They actually find they become more valuable to the organization because they help manage the relationship. Mm -hmm. but they also shift into more of a, uh, str a strategy and policy role of how IT drives their organization and yep. how it leads initiatives there. So they're really spending their time and looking, hey, how can we get more out of our IT? There's this cool thing out there. I need to you know, we'll talk to the Go Concepts guys and see uh, you know, how we can integrate this, uh, this in instead of spending all their time you know, fixing issues that people <laughs> log into this or can't use that yeah. or my mouse quit working or those things that really dominate their time. So we make them, we give them a team. Yeah. And uh, we give them the opportunity to take back control of uh, their IT department instead of being, you know, beholden to it and, and, and having to handle those issues every day. So, yeah. so yeah, so I, that's a huge help. Yeah. So a couple episodes ago, actually, episode 33, um, yeah. I love you to listen to it. I, I talked to Bob Coppage, who is in Northeast, Northeast Ohio, mm -hmm. um, you know, doesn't focus on your vertical, but um, he's actually writing a book on co-managed IT. Um, oh, yeah, because they have, they have found huge success in, you know, working with IT departments to help them, you know, like you said, co-manage everything you just described, right? That, you know, you become an advocate for that or they become an advocate for you. And um, it's, he said, it's, it's helped them increase their business tremendously. So, um, yeah. Oh, absolutely. They definitely should not see uh, an MSP in, in, in any industry, not, you know, just in, in, in our vertical, should not see a managed service provider as an adversary. They should not see yeah. them as trying to replace them. And, um, and if they're trying to do that, it's going to be obvious. You're going to see, <laughs> you know, you're, you're, you're going to know. And that's one of the questions they should, you know, they should ask coming into it mm -hmm. is, you know, how do you see this relationship? How, 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 do, how does this work? And, uh, you know, if they're honest with them, they're going to tell them that, you know, we're going to take over these mundane, if you will, duties and allow you to handle these other areas. And uh, this is what we've seen. And we'll let them talk to anybody. We don't cherry pick our uh, customers. They can talk to anybody at any level, whether it's a superintendent, whether it is a, um, a financial officer, business manager, IT specialist, IT manager, you, individual employee, call and talk to anybody and, and see how the relationship works with us and, and mm -hmm. what they think about us. And, um, you know, we think that they will be 
fairly impressed, especially when it comes to on the IT side. I, I know I've got one uh, gentleman now in South uh, Central Ohio that I saw at a conference up in Columbus uh, with a group called Ohio Association of County Boards, Ohio OECB, <laughs> great group that everybody belongs to. We were at their conference and he was incredibly reluctant and uh, spoke to him and their superintendent there. And he's like a huge advocate now. I mean, we're an advocate oh. for him. He's a huge advocate for us because <laughs> he's seen how much better it has not only made them, but it's made him because now all of a sudden all those projects that he wanted to do, that they wanted to do, yeah. they can get done now. Yep. He, um, because they have the manpower, they have the resources to be able to get it done. He can oversee it, you know, we throw the horsepower to it and make it happen. Mm -hmm. And then he's, he's moved on to the, to the next big thing um, for their organization. So it's, it's really a symbiotic relationship. So that's yeah. great that I, I wasn't aware of the book. So I'm definitely going to reach out on that. But so, he, has, he hasn't written it yet. He's, I think it's going to be released uh, this spring. But, awesome. uh, but we talked awesome. about it a little bit in the episode. But uh, Much needed. yeah. Yeah. So he, fun guy too to talk to. See if you ever meet him. Yeah. <laughs> um, Okay, so just, you know, kind of a couple of other quick things here before yeah. we go. Um, what do you think is the best part about being in managed services? Oh, the best part. Um, I'll tell you, it, uh, you know, I kind of touched on, you know, the personal side of it, the passion side of it, and I could give you the, you know, the platitudes of MSPs and everything. But um, I'll just tell you for us, what I think is the, um, the best part of being in managed services is, uh, you know, we're IT guys, we like things, standardization, right? Mm -hmm. We like yeah. uh, <laughs> details and we like, uh, we like things to be done a certain way. I mean, at least I, I, we do it. If we did, my operations guy would be going crazy. So, uh, <laughs> But yeah, so, so I think the things that, that we really like about uh, being in the managed space is it allows us to standardize our operations and it really allows us to get the best out of our people, right? Mm -hmm. um, instead of just having a help desk and they're working on a, you know, this very different uh, type of issues and different customers, they can really focus in on what they what they love to do. It doesn't mean that they don't have a varied experience and a varied uh, issued uh, day when they're dealing with uh, different customers, but um, you know, they can focus themselves in on a, a higher level and of how we've got our uh, support broken down on our L1, L2, L3, mm -hmm. and that it, it allows us to better place our assets and our best assets are, are really our employees. Yeah. Um, you know, that's a, that's a big thing that, that you see a lot of people say, hey, the most important thing in your business is your customers. And customers are important. They are extremely important. Yeah. Pay the bills, right? <laughs> but the most important thing in your business is your employees. Yeah. It, it really is. It's, uh, they're the first line. They are the people that are carrying the banner for you every day. And uh, they're really the people that decide, you know, where we go. You know, mm -hmm. leadership might... Uh, uh, you might think that they're steering the ship, but um, they're really just uh, the ones that are kind of providing the direction, if you will. It's, uh, it's those great employees that are on the front line that are steering it and decide where we go. So you got to take care of them and you got to give them opportunity uh, to do the things that they love to do. And I think being an MSP gives us the opportunity to do that for them. Okay, great. Um, so we're, we're to our rapid fire round now. Okay. So are you ready for this? I, I, I'll do my best. <laughs> it's really easy. Um, it's just, it's six questions and you just blurt out your answer. So are you, are you ready? Hey, I, as ready as I'll ever be. Okay. Here we go. It's easy. First up, Apple or Android? Apple. Mac, Linux, or Windows? Windows. Amazon, Azure, or something else? Something else because we have our own data center. <laughs> I was wondering if you'd say that. <laughs> the, um, hey, the Go Concepts private cloud. Okay. <laughs> uh, backups, local, cloud, or both? Uh, combination or hybrid. Okay. Um, should you always virtualize? Yes or no? Great question. Just did a blog uh, on that. Uh, 
It's not really yes or no uh, to us. It really mm -hmm. depends. And again, you know, that is a uh, hybrid cloud, maybe the best solution. Um, personally, I think virtualization is, is a huge benefit. So if it's a yes or no, I'm going to say yes. Okay. And then finally, which is worse, printer support or vendor cold calls? <laughs> Great question. Absolutely, hands down. I would get killed if I didn't answer this correctly. Printer support because okay. vendor calls can go to voicemail. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. Vendor calls can go to voicemail. Printer support can't. <laughs> yeah, but hey, you know, don't get me wrong, vendors out there. You need, you need our vendors. We need great yeah. vendors. And I think a lot of times people focus on too much of how their vendors can help them. And you really need to flip that around and see how you can help your vendors. Mm -hmm. And if you do that, if you can see how you can help them make their number, You'll be surprised at the help and, and support that you get from them. Yeah. Ah, great, great advice and work with vendors. Yeah. So. Okay, so we've covered a lot of ground. Um, anything else? Be no, that's all right. Any, anything else be, uh, before we leave here? Any, any um, advice you want to give out? The, the best advice that I can give you is, uh, you know, what I, what I gave students uh, when I was working with them and, uh, uh, you know, on a regular basis uh, there with the Future Business Leader Group. And what I give to uh, my two sons is um, find something that you're passionate about and, uh, you know, work extremely hard to be successful at it. Because, you know, that hard work's not going to guarantee success, but it is going to give you a much better opportunity at it. And, um, you know, that's really all you can control is your, uh, your own effort. So um, find what you're passionate okay. about. Work as hard as you can to make it a success. Awesome, John. Thank you so much. This has been great. Uh, thank you. Pleasure's been all mine. <laughs> and uh, hopefully I'll get to meet you face to face one of these days. Oh, absolutely. Especially if you uh, ever do get back to high, not this time of year, obviously, <laughs> weather, but um, if you get back up here, especially if you're a Columbus guy, you know, we got those Buckeyes. I'm blessed to have a yeah. son in the best damn band in the land. Awesome. So, uh, if you get back here, maybe we can, maybe we can check that out. All right. Sounds good. So, thanks, thanks a lot. So